All right, so we have a few questions here. The first one we have today, is there a dark side to friendship? A dark side to friendship? <laughs> a dark side to friendship. Well, I mean... <clears throat> I'm wondering how... how because on, on one hand, there's a, a yes and a yes. I mean, there's always difficulties in friendship. There's always, you know, in any human relationship, no matter what it is, friendship, romance, anything, it's messy. There's parts that, that you know, downright suck and that you want to avoid uh, and are really hurtful and painful to go through. So there's always that kind of dark side. That's part of just human relationships. And we, we all have to bear through that and work through that. Um, there's also another dark side, I think, to friendship is when we make friendship an idol, right? That's the other danger of relationships. And again, you know, you can do it in a marriage, you can do it with your kids, but you can do it in friendship as well too, where like friends and my friend relationships become my idol. This is what I lift up and value over all things. And that can be dangerous too. It can lead to things like jealousy if the relationship is threatened. Uh, you can form cliques and, and uh, in that way be um, closed off to other people and be hurtful, right? And we put up walls around our friendships and say like, well, it's just me and my two friends and no one else is invited. These are ways in which friendships can then in turn become toxic. Uh, so there is a dark side to friendship there too. Uh, again, we have to always keep things in balance and in perspective. I think you answered that very well. Um, the second question we have here is the Bible speaks about the importance of friendship to glorify God. Does this mean we should prior prioritize our friendships with our Christian friends over our non-Christian friends? Hmm. Yeah, interesting uh, question. I think, I think though, and, and you know, if uh, as the questioner kind of stated, right? If, if, and as we were saying in, in our in, in the sermon today, if friendship is meant to glorify God, God reaches out to those who don't know Him and initiates a friendship with them. So in many ways. You know, we greatly glorify God when we do that, when we reach out to people from outside the church, initiate a friendship, and we glorify God with them, and, and God willing, hopefully lead them to, to the gospel, and introduce the gospel into their lives. Um, I think friendships inside the church and outside the church have their similarities, have their differences. I think, you know, it's a good balance to keep with both of them, but they're both important, and we shouldn't diminish one for the other, I think. And I agree with that, and that reminds me of the Bible where Jesus was sitting down and talking with the taxpayers and the sinners. I mean, in everyone's, dinner with them, you know? in everyone's lives, I mean, you're going to want to have both friends who are Christians and those who aren't. Because those who are Christians, you can kind of talk with and do life with and be like, hey, look, I'm struggling through this. What does the Bible say about this and how can it relate to what I'm going through? At the same time, as you said, with non-Christians, I mean, we're called called to speak with them and show them God's love so I think I think you need both yeah and you know in some ways as, as the pattern that you just showed there what we receive from those the support and encouragement we get from one another in the church we can then do that for those who are not in the church next one is how can we be close friends with non-believers when we don't agree or have that you two moment you know C.S. Lewis the good question C.S. Lewis you know when I read that, and I was I read that book, you know, I think he's th he's thinking of friendship just in human terms. I think it's something bigger in the church that our U two moment over God is so much bigger and makes friendship kind of on a new level, like a new depth, a new grandeur to friendship because it all of a sudden isn't just me and two other people. It can be so much greater. It can encompass so many people. It's a huge bond for all of us. Um, I think when you when you read C.S. Lewis with that with that idea of friendship love, it could be like you know, a U two moment over stamps, you know, or like U two over like you know like uh, I don't know appreciation for literature or like uh, I don't know some specific kind of like wine from only one valley in Italy or something, you know, like over something. It's that unique interest and passion over something. So we can have those friendships uh, with people of all walks of life. You know, we, we do that anywhere. So it's not the same kind of friendship. It's not the same bond, but it's a still a strong bond, and then we can build on top of that. Yeah, exactly. And this last one I'm smiling at because I'm sure it's one we've all struggled with. It says, what can we do about friends, Christian or not, that just irritate us? Feels like it's more of a personal problem, but how should we deal with that as Christians? 
Interesting. I'm okay. Yeah, well, in any human relationship, people are going to ir- I keep thinking, I think this person is irritating you to that point. I think it's, you're probably more of a companion or acquaintance than really a friend. Um, but your friends will probably do things that irritate you nonetheless, regardless. But so will, again, this is like a human relationship question, right? And it's, yeah, I'm glorifying God with my relationships, surrendering my own rights in this relationship. This person's irritating me. I got to look at them how God looks at them, this beautiful son or daughter that they've created, or if they're you know, non-believers still, it's a creation of God, someone who bears their image. Uh, they are sinful. They are broken. They do things that are hurtful, that are bad, that I disagree with, or that are just downright annoying. I do that too. God has shown me his love. I am going to show that love to that person. I'm going to accept them in their brokenness and love them for who they are. Because God has, has, you know, has this love for them as well, and he loves me this way. That's where it starts. Praying to see them, see people with the eyes that God has for them. You know? And letting go, I think, is another part. Like, realizing as long as there's no harm being done, like this person's irritating, isn't like punching you in the face kind of irritating, right? If it's, if it's, if it's not like a harm thing, but it's, you know, you know, you check your own heart on that. You know, well, maybe I don't need, maybe I can forgive and let go of that, of that thing that bothers me. 